You're listening to The Monetized Mom, the podcast that teaches moms of faith how to monetize their expertise online to create influence, impact, income, and more importantly, financial independence. I'm your host, Flo Alexander. Let's chat. Hey mama, if you are tuned into this episode, you're probably looking to grow your coaching business. Well, you are in luck. I just released a new training on how to launch a high ticket program that clients will pay thousands for, even if you don't have your program created. Now you can access it now at themonetizedmom.com forward slash training. That's themonetizedmom.com forward slash training. Again, that's themonetizedmom.com forward slash training. Now let's get on with the show. Today, we're going to be talking about how to nurture your leads and to get them to buy faster. Um, So if that is something that you are in need of help with, um, lead nurturing and also getting people to make the buying decision faster, then you are in the right building. So this was actually a question that came in um, via a training that I was doing. Someone submitted this question and they were saying, hey, how do I nurture my leads? How do I get them to buy faster? And I said, you know what? That actually might be a good topic to share with um, everyone um, when it comes to understanding the sales process, it, it under, coming to understanding um, the overall like buying cycle, the customer journey, all those things becomes important um, as you are growing your coaching business or any service business for that matter. So when it comes to actually uh, nurturing your leads, let's kind of define what that really means or what that is, right? So when we're talking about l- nurturing leads, these are people who have somehow raised their hand to say, yes, I'm interested in your service. I'm interested in what you have to offer. And in exchange, they've given you some kind of information. So in the case of uh, what I teach my clients and what I do myself for my business is they've given me their email address. So this person becomes a lead. And so they basically said, hey, I'm interested. And your job as the business owner, as the service provider is to then say, um, is to then cultivate that relationship. They've already raised their hand, said, I'm interested. Now your job is to cultivate that relationship. So that's what we're talking about when we say lead nurturing. So how do you cultivate that relationship? Um, so there are a couple of ways that you can nurture your leads. So um, the first way is in alignment with how they've raised their hand. So in most cases, you've given them a lead magnet right? Something to attract them. So you've given them a lead magnet in exchange for their email address and sometimes their phone number. So obviously they're saying, Hey, I'm okay with you contacting me. So the first way that you can actually start nurturing leads is to actually email them when they have given you their email address, when they've raised their hand and said, Hey, I'm interested. Hey, I, I, uh, I like what you're doing. I want to know more about it. I'm giving you my email address and my phone number, uh, email them and text them, right? So that's how you nurture your leads. That's one of the first way that you actually nurture your leads. But also, right, the whole gist of this is not just saying, hey, email people, email people, text people. The whole point of what you're actually doing is cultivating the relationship by having conversations. I don't know how many times I've said this and I'll continue to say it, but a big part of sales is really the art of cultivating conversations and building relationships. And unfortunately, in the age of social media, a lot of us have lost the art of what it is to communicate with people. Um, like we just don't know. I know like at, I'm a millennial, but I, I can imagine the other generations thinking, oh my gosh, y'all don't know how to communicate. I imagine that my mom's generation was probably like, what is this text messaging? Like, why can't you pick up the phone and call people? Right. And now our generation is looking at people in, uh, in younger generations and saying, what in the world can y'all not carry on a conversation? Can you not write a full sentence better yet? Can you write in cursive? <laughs> Right. So it is the art of communication and building relationship. So if you don't fundamentally know how to communicate with people, if you don't fundamentally know how to engage with people and how to build relationship with people, it's going to be very hard to build a business, let alone get people to convert and buy your high ticket offer. So first things first, let's take a step back. The When we're talking about lead nurturing, I can tell you to email people. I can tell you to text people. I can tell you to send people direct messages. I can tell you to respond to comments, but if you don't have the fundamental basis of understanding how to communicate with people and how to build real relationships with people, it doesn't even matter. Okay. 
So first things first, if we're talking about how to uh, nurture leads, right? It starts with how do I actually become a better communicator and how do I actually cultivate relationships? How do I become a better people person? And I know I have friends who joke about this all the time. They're like, I don't do people. And sometimes I just don't be people in either. However, when it comes to knowing that this is what's necessary to grow my business, I'm very good at knowing how to build relationships. I'm very good at knowing how to communicate with people. And that just comes with doing. So if you want to be able to nurture your leads and get them to actually buy into your business faster, first of all, work on your communication skills and work on your ability to build relationship with people. Okay. Understanding the basis of nurturing a lead actually comes from the ability to communicate and build relationships. So if you want to really grow your business Focus on those fundamental school skills. Focus on having emotional intelligence and just overall communication skills. There's a book, I haven't read it, but there's a book called How to Win Friends and Something. It's a very popular book. If y'all know what I'm talking about, drop it in the comments. But there's a popular book about, like How to Win Friends or something like that. That's what you need to learn how to do when you want to build a business. Not necessarily win friends because you're not trying to... Um, convince people or anything like that, but you are really building and cultivating relationships. So you have to have that emotional intelligence and that communication skills. So first things first, I know y'all didn't want to hear that. Y'all wanted to hear, wanted me to say, uh, yeah, you send X amount of emails a day and you send X amount of text messages. No, learn the art of communication, learn the art of relationship building, which a lot of times happens offline first, right? Get to know the people who are in the physical space with you. Learn how to communicate in the physical space. And all of that, all of that begins to translate online as well. So um, that's first things first. If you want to begin to nurture your leads, it's the art of communication. Now, the way and the vehicle that you have those conversations to build those relationships and to have that communication is via email, sending emails, is via um, direct message, is via text message and all that stuff. Now, if you want to sharpen that skill and be better about nurturing and, and cultivating those relationships and getting people and building this tribe, right? One of the skills that I really had to get good at and have um, really um, gotten good at over the years has been copywriting. Um, and that's just knowing how to communicate just via words. Uh, and that for me came from years and years of literally producing a piece of written content every single week for the past over a decade. So if you want to get better at nurturing your leads, one, build the communication skills, but then learn how to articulate that in the way that you're in the medium that you're using. So if you're using email, learn how to articulate that relationship building via written words, um, being able to write that in text format. Or if if that's not your thing and you're like, I don't have time to learn how to become a savvy copywriter and I don't know how to connect with emotions and all that stuff via words, then learn how to do it via video and communicate via video. So your email literally could be sending a link to a video. Nonetheless, it's the art of communication and knowing how to articulate that in different media. So that's first things first when it comes to nurturing your leads. Now, the second part of the question that I got was, how do I get people to buy faster? And I think before I answer that question, we need to level expectations around the customer journey. There is a, a pyramid. I wish I had it. There's a chart that shows the percentage of people who actually are ready to buy now. And on that pyramid, the percentage of people who are ready to buy now is like 3%. And then I can't remember the people who are like thinking about it. There's this whole chart. I'll probably send it out to my email list. But there, there we need to level our, our expectations around the time that it takes people to actually make the buying decision and also understanding that there are different types of buyers. There's this book. And I can't pull it up on my phone because I have both of my phones <laughs> on camera right now. But there is this book. Um, I think it's called The Art of Sales. Don't don't quote me on this. I think it's called The Art of Sales, maybe by Brian Tracy. Could be wrong. Again, don't quote me on it. But there's this book um, that talks about the art of selling. And it breaks down the different types of buyers. And there are people who just are not going to buy right now. You do have people who are like impulsive buyers who make quick decisions, who are ready to buy now. But that is a very small percentage of the market. So when we're thinking about and, and trying to strategize, how do I get people to buy fa faster? Literally, I literally just had this conversation with um, the person who supports me in operations. Um, but 
when we have those conversations and we're trying to come up with a strategy, we have to recognize that very, there's a very small percentage of the market who's actually ready to buy. And there are different types of buyers. There are people like me who have to find facts, right? I need to understand all the details before I actually make a decision. And if you're in the space of coaching where you're selling high ticket, people got to know the facts before they start spending a lot of money, right? So either you're going to be very good at articulating all of those facts within one enrollment call or there's going to be multiple touch points that you have to have in order for them to be able to make that decision, right? So if you want to shorten the time that people, it takes for someone to enroll in your program or to get someone to buy or to buy into your services, there are two things that you can do. One, you can increase your your volume, right? So if the percentage is 3% of people who are ready to buy now and you want more sales, then that tells you you need to get in front of more people so that 3% is more more people, right? So the 3% of a larger number is a larger number. So if you want to increase that, um, that shorten that time that it takes them to buy, then you need to increase the number of people that you're actually engaging with, right? Or the other thing is that you have to level your expectations around, <laughs> around when people are going to buy that's that's how you can do it. Either you can increase the number of people that you engage with that are ready to buy now, or you can level your expectations around the time that it actually takes people to make the buying decision and be able to meet them at each of those different points. So with that said, if you want people to buy faster, you also need to have a way for them to be able to buy faster. So if I'm telling you that only 3% of the market is ready to buy now, and you're saying, well, okay, well, I want to increase the amount of people that I'm reaching so that that 3% it actually makes a bigger impact, then you actually have to have a way for them to actually buy now. So the, doing the webinars, live webinars, where people actually have to wait, doing um, these launches, right, that only happen certain amount of times a year where people have to wait. Those are not effective ways to actually get people to buy now. So if you want to buy now, you actually have to have the systems and the structures in place that support people buying now. So what does that look like? For me and for what I teach my clients, that's actually having an evergreen funnel so that as you're getting that volume of people and you're touching the people who are actually ready to buy now, they can actually buy now. Like they can actually get on a call and buy now. Or in some cases I've seen, get on a sales page if that's what your strategy is, right? Get on a sales page and buy now. But you have to create the environment for them to be able to buy if you want them to buy faster, okay? But in addition to that, remember I said not only a small percentage of those people are ready to buy now. So what do you do with the people who aren't ready to buy that minute, right? You have a way to continue nurturing them which is what I started off in the beginning. You have a way to continue having those touch points, building those relationships, right? Building, um, uh, having that communication, right? You have to have a system for doing that. So when they are ready to buy, you're available, you're top of mind for them to actually make that buying decision. But here's the thing at the end of the day, one, level your expectations. Two, you can't force nobody to buy at the end of the day, you cannot force anyone to buy. We live by the decisions that we make. So you can't force anybody to make the buying decision. You can only facilitate the opportunity for them to be able to buy, give them a good reason to buy, right? Showing the value, articulating the value and the return that they're going to get and making the investment. And then you can only um, nurture them, right? Build that relationship so that when they are ready to buy, that you are top of mind. All right. So That's how you nurture your leads and ultimately get them to buy faster. It starts with you actually starting with you, working on your communication skills, working on your relationship building skills, and then deciding what medium that you're going to use to actually nurture them. And that's many cases, email, it could be text message, but then actually honing the skill of communication and articulate it in that, in that manner. Right. And then you have to give them, um, you have to give them a way to buy. If you want them to buy faster, set up your system so that they can buy faster. Have an evergreen sales funnel instead of doing webinars. Have an evergreen sales funnel instead of doing live launches. Have an evergreen sales funnel instead of doing these doggone three and five day challenges. How about that? If you want people to buy faster, (laughs) stop making them wait. And then also just nurture them and and communicate with them, build conversations and build relationships. And that's how you can shorten the buyer's journey, but know at the end of the day that 
you have to level your expectations and people are going to buy when they're going to buy it. And there are different types of buyers that you need to be aware of and be able to communicate within their buyer's journey. All right. Listen, if y'all got any questions, drop them in the comments. Let me know if this made sense to you. Let me know if you let me know. I'm going to ask this question. Do you have an evergreen funnel? Do you actually have a system set up to support people who want to buy now? Are you actually nurturing your leads? Are you having conversations? Are you emailing? Are you texting? Are you engaging in social media? Let me know if you're actually doing those things because if you aren't, then I don't know what you're expecting to happen. (laughs) I don't know what you're expecting to happen. Like having a coaching or service-based industry is not like having a Walmart or a Target where people are just gonna walk in and buy stuff off of a whim, right? You actually have to get them in that environment and have the structures in place for them to actually want to make the buying decision. So you have to think of yourself, if if Target and Walmart operates and thrives off of people coming in and seeing things, you have to figure out how do I create an environment where people are, quote unquote, coming into my world and seeing things and deciding, hey, I want to buy. I'm in an environment where I want to buy to buy. How do you create that environment for your ideal clients? And it's by communicating, having communication skills, building relationships. It's by giving them the opportunity to buy. It's by, uh, and when I say giving them the opportunity to buy, it's meeting them at whatever stage of the buyer's journey that they're at, meeting them at whatever place they are as a buyer, because again, there are different types of buyers, right? So creating that environment. So when they are ready to buy, they actually will make the decision. As always, I hope that you found this episode helpful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review. And with that, I'll talk to you in the next episode.